Wisconsinized 2014 election coverage is brought to you by the Wisconsin Hospital Association. For over 90 years, a valued voice for Wisconsin hospitals, supporting high quality, high value care in communities like yours. Wisconsin I is at the Brown County Library. We're interviewing candidates for the 2014 elections. We're interviewing Mr. Mike Roarcast of Nina. He's a Republican running in the 55th Assembly District. Mike, welcome to Wisconsin I. Thank you. Uh, Pleasure being here. Just this announcement, Wisconsin I appreciates the support of the Wisconsin Hospital Association, which represents more than 139 hospitals and health systems for making these candidate interviews possible. Um, Mike, uh, from your website, I see you are a successful executive and you retired and is this your first foray into politics? This is my first foray, yes. I was a human resources person for the last uh, professional for the last 32 years. Uh, most recently I was the uh, chief human resources officer for Oshkosh Corporation, a Fortune 300 company uh, headquartered in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. And then why why are you running? Well, <laughs> I guess uh, I'm running really uh, three key things is I want to take my business leadership that I've uh, what I've learned in in the business world and I want to take uh, that in my community service and then my strong knowledge of just the local areas and take that to Madison to help create more jobs here in the in the 55th district also to ensure that we continue to improve and build on our education system and third is to just help our state fiscally manage our tax dollars most effectively. Mike from your website it seems to me that you are uh, a central issue is the our, our public schools our, our yes. schools uh, you want to talk about some potential why that's such a key issue for you sir well it's really a it's a personal uh, interest of mine uh, first and foremost is I've got two sons uh, I've got a, a 20 year old and a 15 year old uh, and we've utilized different school system or different school options and so we've had choices in our schools uh, they went to private uh, uh, school through our church through eighth grade and then now they're in the public schools. The older one graduated in Nina High School. He's doing great in college. So the school systems prepared him great for the, you know, for to go out into the world. Mm -hmm. uh, our younger son, uh, actually, he's in a public high school as well, but it's a charter school. Uh, and it's uh, focused on uh, theater and the arts. So again, it's something that's tailored to his individual interest and skills, his, his basically his talents, which is great. And he's actually thriving now in high school. And he has been, but he's really thriving in high school in this charter school. A big issue, as you know, is the choice and voucher issue. Yes. Um, if you're a member of the assembly, you'll be voting on the next budget. Right now, in the next school year, of course, there's a thousand uh, student limit on choice outside these two urban cities. Um, what do you think? Should that limit be removed, that a thousand student limit on choice outside of these uh, cities? I do support the voucher program. I think that it's a very positive program. I think that the cap needs to be um, uh, looked at and changed. I think that uh, you know before any final uh, you know determination of how that cap is increased, uh, I think we need to just evaluate the program. Just like you would evaluate in business, you, anytime you start something new, you want to see is it really solving the problem? And if it is, then you can expand it. So I do agree in the voucher program, and I agree in expanding it, um, but in terms of how much I think I'd like to do some more evaluation on that. I understand. Uh, I'm finding as I talk to candidates for the assembly that as they go door to door they're being asked about the common core standards. Yes. How do you feel about those? I think from a common core standard that we can do better. I think and what I mean by that is that I think that school um, curriculum and standards is best determined by local parents, educators, and school boards. I mean, that's how we've, that's how our education system has been built for years. And I think that that's really what should continue so that it's coming from the bottom up or from the grassroots, again, from parents, educators, and school boards, rather than top down from the federal government. As I talk to some candidates, although they may not be in your race, some are saying Wisconsin should Re repeal Common Core standards. Are you there? I do believe that that is an option that should be considered, yes. Okay. Yes. Let's talk about health care. As you're aware, the federal government told all states, if you expand your MA benefits, we'll pay all the costs. Mm -hmm. um, Governor Walker and the leaders of the Senate and the Assembly said thanks, but no thanks. You think that was the right decision? Um, currently, I support Governor Walker's position on that, yes. You do? Okay. Yes. Um, transportation funding? Transportation critical to this area. 
with 41 running running yeah. right through what yeah. what would be your district um, but there's a 650 million dollars shortfall projected in the next budget for the Department of Transportation now do we delay some of these major projects 41 I think is still under construction or it is, yeah. do we do we raise taxes or do you have any other ideas on how to fill that gap well I do believe that, that obviously transportation is critical to the economic engine in the Fox cities and in Wisconsin as a whole if we're going to create more jobs and ensure that uh, that we can sustain the jobs that we have and create more we're going to have to have the right transportation systems so I'm still looking at what the best options are for that but we definitely have to keep our transportation systems, our infrastructure, we have to have it in the right condition so that it can support not just the communities but support the businesses which ultimately then do support the communities. Wisconsin, as you know, gets most of its transportation money from just two sources, our gas tax and what you and I pay to renew our license plates. Correct. Would you consider raising either of those, or is that off the table? I think you? that we need to look at uh, all options. Some, some of the gas tax is declining because of the increase in the fuel efficiency of vehicles. So I think that we need to look at various options in order to, uh, and maybe in one option is hopefully that we can just become more uh, economic in our spending maybe in other areas in the state. Uh, so I think that that would be an option that we could take a look at as well. And if the economy, if it continues to grow as it's supposed to and the tax rate revenues you know continue to increase that might help offset some of these too the where you may not even need a tax increase because it's so timely I'm, I'm asking every candidate to this question your reaction to judge Crabb's reaction on Judge Crabb's ruling, excuse me, on same-sex marriage? Um, you know, it, currently that's being decided in the courts. I, I, you know, there's not much I, I can do on that, you know, right now. I, eventually that could come back to the legislature, but that's something that's being decided. Um, I, do, uh, I do a support Governor Walker's stand or his position on that issue. Okay. Two attorney general candidates say that first-time drunken driving should be a crime and not basically the traffic citation that it currently is. Your position? Um, again, I guess what I'd, I'd go back to is, you know, what's what's the, the root cause of, of drunk driving? And, uh, you know, working in business, and actually I'm on the board of the Samaritans uh, Counseling Center of the Fox Cities, and they're a, a faith-based mental health provider. Oftentimes, uh, I think that substance abuse is caused by mental health issues. So I would really, I think that it would, it's incumbent upon companies and communities to really deal with the mental health uh, issues as the, the government has. Governor Walker has, has given more money to mental health issues. That should hopefully then reduce the substance abuse issues, which is then, I think, you know, help to decrease some of these, you know, incidences that you're hearing on the road. Obviously, there's a place for everything, but I think that, you know, we really should be focusing on the root cause of what's causing people to do some of these behaviors that obviously are dangerous to others. You're not ready to vote then to change the current law. I need to look into that to understand more what that is first. Uh, minimum wage, whether it should be increased as an issue in Madison and Washington, your position? Um, I think that, you know, again, as be, after being a human resources person for over 32 years, um, I've worked for companies that have always paid higher than the minimum wage, and I believe that um, wage rates are best determined by market conditions and by what employers can afford to give. And if there is, uh, people have the skills and the ability to work, then the company will pay them appropriate. And again, I think uh, many there are many jobs out there already that are above minimum wage. Um, when I ask you about other issues, why is your um, your campaign website talks about tax reform? What what's your specific ideas on tax reform? Well, I think that we need to take a look at uh, tax reform in a couple of areas. First is I think from the individual tax levels, I think that maybe a flat flat tax could be looked at, or even Governor Walker has said, you know, maybe we ought to take a look at uh, eliminating the state income tax as other states have. Again, I'm not saying that we that's definitely what we should do, but I. I think that those those are alternatives that I think should be looked at. You know, from a business standpoint, I think that we have to be careful and to not discourage business from any tax situation, particularly from small business owners. And in their first few years, which is always a struggle for new business, small business owners to get up and going. Uh, if there's some encouragement that we can do from the tax standpoint, I think that may be helpful. If you eliminate the income tax, you've heard people say, "Well, then we have we're going to have."
going to have a sales tax of 13, 14 percent. Your answer to that? Well, again, I think it's an alternative that needs to be looked at. I, I, I do know some states that do have that. I don't remember them having 13 to 14 percent. Maybe I'm incorrect, but I'm, I'm but I, I but think I you're don't. right. No, okay. no state yeah, that doesn't I, have an income tax. Right. I don't, or a sales tax at 13 or 14, or at least right. maybe on certain items, but not, not, a, not a overall sales tax on that. Is yeah. there any other issue that's key to your campaign I haven't asked you about, sir? Um, just in summary, again, it's back to I think that we need to we need to work with local employers to create more jobs locally, and I think that we need to ensure that we continue to upgrade the schools and to uh, ensure that we have not just K through 12 but good secondary schools, which we already do, but to use those even more in the state, the UW system, the Fox Valley Technical College, and then also the last is just again I think we can have an opportunity to help our state government to take some of the principles that businesses have learned of how to run more efficiently, how to take their tax dollars and use them more effectively and that's what I hope to do in Madison. And then finally do you want to highlight any difference, differences between you and your opponents in the primary? I think really um, from my standpoint what I believe as I have is I have a very strong uh, combination of business leadership skills of working for large successful local employers in the Fox Cities area in the district or, clo in, or close to the district mm -hmm. uh, and also a, a track record of community involvement in terms of serving on the boards of the YMCA and the Samaritans Counseling Center. I currently I have been serving on those boards and then third just strong family values. Uh, my wife and I we've been married for almost 30 years, uh, raised our two sons in the same home, gone to the same church for the last 19 years uh, um, you know, we love Nina, we love the Fox Cities and the whole area of district, uh, Appleton, Clayton, the, the whole area that's, uh, that's in there. So, uh, and the, I guess the last point is that um, since I've retired, I'm able to devote my full time to the state assembly seat. I understand. Very good. Mike Roar, excuse me, I'll get this right. Mike, <laughs> Mike okay. Roarcast, I apologize, uh, of Nina, is a Republican candidate in the 55th Assembly District. Mike, thanks for talking to Wisconsin Eye. Thank you. I appreciate the time today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.